Hello and welcome to second section. There is a section zero for AP statistics. Uh, we're going to talk about analyzing categorical data. Uh, all right, so uh, four things we want to go through. We want to talk about uh, representing data, two-way tables, pie charts, and bar graphs, some of the ins and outs, do's and don'ts uh, with each of these. We want to talk about conditional and marginal distribution. Uh, and relationships between categorical variables. This is going to take up most of our time. Uh, we're going to talk about organizing a statistical problem. And uh, this is going to be kind of the framework for uh, generating your free responses for AP questions. Uh, so we're going to talk about that framework, state, plan, do, and conclude. Uh, and that's going to be reiterated throughout the entire year. And then we're going to talk about, uh, so very important, and then we're going to talk about Simpson's Paradox briefly. Okay, so uh, let's talk about uh, frequency tables and relative frequency tables. <clears throat> so when we're analyzing categorical data, um, I have a list here of uh, some type of uh, <clears throat> individual item and the format of uh, the type of station <clears throat> that plays uh, a given type of or a set of songs. So I have adult contemporary, adult standard, contemporary hit country, news talk and information, etc. And then it lists in this particular location or state <clears throat> um, how many of the stations uh, fall into that category. So <clears throat> we can create two different tables. One would be a frequency table. And the frequency table would provide a count of the category. So that would be the number of uh, stations that fall within that category. And then a relative frequency table would take uh, each of the different categories and it would uh, compare them to each other as a percent of the total. So uh, whereas in the count there are 1,556 adult contemporary stations within this given location, uh, that represents 11.2% of the total. So you can see here uh, pretty quickly on the right-hand side the relative importance uh, to people in the area uh, for each of the different formats of radio stations as a percent or as a total count. All right, so frequency versus relative frequency. Frequency is going to be a count and relative frequency tables will provide a percent of a category. All right, so you'll notice, you probably noticed that <clears throat> in the relative frequency table that the total ends up being 99.9. .9. And so uh, we call this a rounding error, a round off error, uh, because the sum of the frequency tables or frequency counts uh, or relative frequencies end up being close to but not equal to 100%. There's some rounding error here. Now, when you're looking at data, uh, you always want to make sure that uh, this sum adds up to 100% or very close to it. Otherwise, there's going to be something wrong in your calculation. So ultimately, you'll be asked to create these types of tables, uh, enter the relative frequency table information, and then you want to do a spot check. And the spot check is going to be to make sure that the percent here uh, adds up to just about 100%. Uh, and if it's not close, then you got to go back and check your work. Uh, but it's okay if you're off by a uh, tenth of a percent or so. Okay, so uh, pie charts and bar graphs provide a graphical representation of the distribution of categor categorical data. And we're going to talk about uh, when to use uh, one or the other when it's appropriate or not. Uh, sometimes you can use both. And in this case, they are using both bar and a pie chart. And typically, you want to use uh, a pie chart when all of the categories are related and the totals add up to 100%. That's not always going to be the case. Um, all right, uh, so choosing bar graphs and pie charts. Uh, so we have the data. I have age group and the percent owning an MP3 player. Uh, you can see that 12 to 17 years of age, 53 or 54% own an MP3 player, 
uh, 30 own, uh, 30% percent own an MP3 player between 18 and 24, 30 again between 25 and 34, 13% uh, between 35 and 54, and 5% 5 55 and older. So because we're not comparing usage within a single group, we're going to have to use a bar chart only because you can see that the totals here uh, for the percent owning an MP3 player are going to add up to more than 100%. Uh, so it's best to use a bar graph uh, because the relative frequency refers to separate unique categories or groups and the total frequency adds up to more than 100%. So a bar graph is going to be the most relevant form of representation graphically for this set of data. All right, uh, another thing we need to watch out for uh, is misleading relative values. So you can see here, uh, this is the percent of people who have owned a previous computer, uh, what the type of computer is, PC or Mac. Uh, and this has a scale that starts at zero, and this has a scale that starts at 10. And you can see that when we start the scale at 10, we end up with a different look than it makes these relative values for PC and none look very small. Uh, and so we end up skewing the way th that the bar graph is visually represented. So this is a legitimate form of representation, but it ends up being misleading because this uh, starting point is 10. So uh, the point here is it's okay uh, to represent graph graphically in bar graphs this way, but you have to be careful uh, when you're interpreting these to make sure that you do identify uh, the incremental values and what they start with. Uh, and that should also be represented as part of your criteria. Okay, so uh, first classwork problem for today is classwork 1.1.1. Um, I need for you to take a look at this visual representation. And in this case, there are no, and say no wrong answers, uh, but I am looking for some specific answers. What is not appropriate or what is inaccurate about the way that uh, a, a direct TV is representing their ability to provide you with HD channels uh, versus uh, the competition for a dish network and other cable representation. So first set of classwork for you. You can pause here uh, and just look at this and maybe copy down or do your work uh, while you're copying this down and uh, then I am going to move on. Okay, uh, so now we want to talk about conditional distribution. We want to talk about frequency, uh, marginal and conditional, and joint distribution. Although joint distribution isn't really covered in the book, we're going to talk uh, and focus mostly on marginal and uh, conditional uh, distribution. Okay, so we have some terms to start talking about. All right, so frequency, uh, this is uh, a table that talks about uh, prom attendance for juniors and seniors, uh, how many juniors there were that were considered for the prom, how many seniors there were, who's attending, who's not attending. Uh, and so we're going to work with this table here, and we're going to define some things. So the first thing to define is a frequency. Frequency, as we talked about before, was a count of a variable. And so in this case, my frequency of juniors attending is five. Seniors attending is uh, seven. Not attending, uh, juniors not attending is eight. Seniors not attending is 10. Okay, so now we're going to talk about uh, joint frequency, marginal frequency, and conditional frequency. And uh, we're going to define uh, the difference between all of these based on the frequency. So joint frequency is the count in any of the columns and rows that are not totals here. Marginal frequency is the count in the cells. An example would be uh, juniors not attending the prom. Uh, marginal frequency uh, talks about the count in the cells of the final column here. So number of seniors in the table, I'm sorry, number of seniors uh, who were considered for the event is 17. And conditional frequency talks about cells in the final row, number of students attending the prom is going to be 12. All right, so we're just uh, taking counts joint 
uh, marginal and conditional here on the row, marginal in the column. All right, so the next thing we need to consider is distribution. And distribution is going to be the ratio or the relative frequency of some uh, event. <clears throat> and so we'll call that the ratio of a cell over a total amount. And in this case, we could say the distribution of seniors not attending the prom is going to be, uh, excuse me, uh, the distribution of seniors not attending is going to be uh, 10 over 30. Now, I can qualify this under conditional or uh, marginal, and we'll separate that out because this is one of the two uh, values or joint, uh, or one of the three. <clears throat> uh, and that's what we're going to go on to do now. So let's categorize this distribution that we talk about as a ratio because we have to specify uh, what the numerator is, what the denominator is, uh, and they're all going to change from marginal, conditional, and joint. All right, so let's talk about marginal first. So marginal distribution is a ratio of a categorical variable, so let's say the total, over the total, no total number of uh, data points. So the marginal distribution of juniors uh, who did or did not attend, so are considered for the event, so in this total here, is going to be 13 over 30. All right, so marginal distribution considers this total value uh, in the row over the total total value of everybody who did or did not attend. All right, conditional distribution is a ratio of a count of a cell in a column over the total count in the given column. So we'll say the conditional distribution of a senior not attending the prom is going to be 10 over 18. So we consider the cell value over the value in the respective column in the final row. So the conditional distribution of seniors not attending the prom is going to be this 10 value frequency over the frequency of the total in that given column. So that's going to be uh, conditional distribution. And then finally, joint distribution, which your book doesn't really get into, is going to be the ratio of a count of a cell uh, in a column over the total total amount. So the joint distribution of seniors not attending problem uh, prom is going to be 10 over 30 uh, or 1 over 3. Okay, uh, so let's take an example of all this so you have an idea of what's going on. So what is a conditional frequency of not attending an event? Let's say that's a, a, a conditional frequency of not attending an event. The marginal distribution of juniors considered for the event and the conditional distribution of juniors attending the event. Uh, so why don't you see if you could figure out the answers to these questions. I'm going to pause them to show you these answers, and then I'm going to give you another question which you're going to do on your own. Okay, so the conditional frequency of not attending the event, I have 18 people who did not attend the event. Out of the total number of people who are considered, the marginal distribution for jun juniors considered for the event is going to be 13 over 30. That includes attending and not attending. And then the conditional distribution of juniors attending the event, I find juniors attending, is going to be 5 over 12. So given that uh, someone has attended, what's the probability, basically, that uh, that person is going to be a junior? It's going to be 5 over 12. All right, uh, so let's move on to your first classwork problem. I'm sorry, your second classwork problem, 1.1.2. Uh, and again, you're going to do this on a piece of paper and submit it to me. Uh, in a form that I specify outside of uh, this lesson. All right, uh, so here's a table of values. These are different, but similar questions. What's the frequency of juniors at the event? What's the marginal distribution of juniors considered for the event? What's the frequency of students attending? And what's the uh, conditional distribution of seniors attending? Uh, sometimes for the frequency, I leave out conditional or marginal or joint, uh, but it is specified as part of the problem. It's not necessary to include joint, marginal, or conditional all the time, uh, as long as you're clear about the frequency. All right, so that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Uh, again, second classwork problem. I have more to give to you. Please come back and join us in the next part. Uh, we start talking about how to set up uh, free response questions, analyzing, uh, concluding, stating, planning, doing, and concluding.